Reworks have always been, and will always be, a part of this game. Because this is one ever-evolving system, where every season is different from the last, some champions need to be updated in order to keep up. What's interesting about reworks is that they can come in multiple different forms. There are gameplay updates like what we saw with Wukong a while back, where he didn't see a model update, or any new splash arts, or any truly new abilities, but in terms of his gameplay, it was a bit of a tune-up. This was a series of tweaks and changes to help modernize an older and more simple champion, and it was extremely successful. Ever since that update, Wukong has now went from being nearly a dead champion to a solid top laner. He's seen a substantial amount of pro play, high low solo queue presence, and what's cool is that at its core, he's still exactly the same bruiser monkey, just a little better. There are also full VGUs, or simply VGUs, which stands for Visual Gameplay Updates, essentially a total rework. A good example would be for Irelia. The Q is almost exactly the same, and the E is still her CC ability, but everything else is pretty different. She needed this because the old one, despite the fact that it wasn't a terrible champion, was still old and very outdated. The old Irelia's kit was very simple, but came with some huge balancing problems. Although, you know, that part isn't necessarily fixed with the rework either. The champion was reimagined with this update. New champion model, new arts, a new theme. All of this paving the way for her to be featured as one of the main characters in a season cinematic. These kind of reworks aren't just for the gameplay of a champion, but the League universe as a whole. Riot wants to make sure that their champions, their identity, the thing that makes League of Legends what it is, has a solid roster of modern champions. We used to also get class updates in bunches, but that has since been discontinued because Riot admitted that most of them were failures, called the class updates. At one point, we saw Assassins get overhauled, we saw Marksman class update, and we saw a bunch of different mages receive huge changes, just to name a few. But there's one type of rework that we've only seen a handful of times, and that's what I'd like to talk about today. Back in 2015, Riot decided to try what they called an experimental rework, something that was likely going to be reverted, never to be seen again, almost like it was just for some goofs and gaffes. And that's exactly what happened. This is a change that didn't have a very good chance of ever making it out of PvE, and it didn't. In fact, there wasn't even a follow-up or an update. One day, it was just gone. Let's talk about the time where Riven had a resource bar. In life, it would be really cool if all of us could have Yasuo or Kane's hair. Those luscious flowing locks are great and all, but let's get serious for a second. It's not always possible. Which is why I gotta tell you about our sponsor today, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Which is why the best thing to do about it is to take preventative action and help the situation while there's still hair left. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your case online and then recommend the right treatment plan for you. Remember, everyone is different, but if you still have hair, there's an option to help it be thicker, stronger, and promote growth. Your treatment will be shipped to you at the door every three months. Typically, results will come in four to six months, which means the sooner you start using Keeps, the better opportunity to save your hair. If you're ready to take action over this and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash exil or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash E-X-I-L. A little history of Riven's kit here. She's barely been changed since her release, at least in broad terms. The kit itself is completely identical to how she came out more than a decade ago, with number tweaks here and there. The biggest nerfs she ever received were lowering the missile speed substantially on her wind slash and by nerfing her shield duration by one second. Part of Riven's infamous kit is the fact that she has no mana. She is grouped in with seven other champions that have no resources whatsoever. Six of these champions display absolutely nothing on their resource bar. Technically, something can display for Yone and Aatrox, but they are as resourceless as Garen or Zac because it has no impact on their gameplay. This means that as Riven, the only thing you have to worry about is your cooldowns. If her ability is up, it can be used. 
Riot has reworked a lot of things. They have flat out removed mechanics from Champion's Kit, like Aatrox's Revive, and they've even added things in with updates. But one thing they are very hesitant about changing is a Champion's Resource Bar. As far as I know, Riot has never once given a champion mana, or taken away their mana in a rework. From the get-go, some champions just have mana, and others don't. Even ones with fury systems will depend on the champion. Some always have to play around it constantly like Tryndamere and Renekton and it's a part of their identity. Others like Rek'Sai barely have to pay attention to it. It's just a bit of healing and the E true damage. It's actually interesting all of the different ways that in League of Legends champions can use resources. In my opinion, it's one of the coolest parts of champion design. There are so many different resource bar types. We have mana, energy, multiple different types of fury bars, Aatrox used to have Bloodwell, some champions have health costs, Rumble's heat, Samira's style, there are ammo champions like Jin and Graves, Nar and Shivana have to sort of build up to their true form. It's crazy all of the different ways that champions have resources. Because of Riot's track record of being very stingy with changing resources, it's not really surprising that this rework was experimental for Riven. They were going to err on the side of caution. But let's take a look at what this rework actually did. First off, this system was likely never to be designed to gate her cooldowns in any way. Even for being a bit of a test, it was unlikely to be anything more than some kind of rage system like Renekton or Tryndamere. It would be very difficult to truly gauge any Riven changes if all of a sudden she started running out of energy like Zed or Lee Sin, or if she had mana problems like Anivia. If they were going to add something, it would have been much more along the lines of stacking up resources in a fight to make her stronger. Riven's new system was called Edge. The way that Edge stacked was by using her passive against champions. Riven's passive is a Sheen type of effect, and it's one of her biggest ways of showcasing skill on the champion. Historically, Riven is known for being a champion with a ton of animation cancels. At this point, it's essentially built into her gameplay and is a must to play the champion at a high level. The most important combo to understand or nail is her Q or Fast Q combo. With a bit of practice, you begin to understand that by clicking off and then back onto the target during your Q animation with your right click, this will reduce the time it takes for the Q animation to complete, making your Q auto, Q auto, Q auto combo much faster. Since Riven gets a ton of damage from her passive and is a true spell weaver, knowing how to do this correctly is pretty much required in today's League of Legends. You can't even really do competitive damage on the champion without understanding it. This means that the edge being generated from autoing champions with your passive would reward good player skill on the champ, which is always a positive thing. In this game, it's very important to reward skill, whether it be landing critical abilities or comboing correctly. There's a good reason that Ari gets a damage amplification on her charm or that Nidalee can actually one-shot you if she ever somehow manages to land a spear. If the game doesn't reward you for landing skill shots, what's the point of playing? That being said, a big change was made to this passive where they reduced the number of charges. Instead of it holding up to 3 for 3 autos like it always has, with this edge system it would only hold 1. This forced the player to be proficient at weaving your auto attacks. You could no longer stack up QQQ and then auto 3 times, or by using any other ability combo like EWQ and the double cast mechanic. You get the idea. These edge stacks also didn't last forever, they started falling off after just 10 seconds. So what did these stacks of edge actually do though now that you've generated some? Well, it did two things. First, it gave her bonus damage, which is a very interesting kit buff that you hardly ever see. At maximum edge, she just did 10% more damage, presumably on everything, spells, auto attacks, the whole works. It didn't just make her Q do more damage, or give it healing, or do true damage, or have more range or something like that. Straight up, Riven just did 10% more damage overall. The other thing Edge did was increase the damage on Windslash. In this version, Windslash no longer executed enemies based on how low their health was, so it wasn't a good execute snipe. Instead, throwing the Windslash would consume all of your Edge and increase the damage. 
This sounds really interesting. The fact that Windslash couldn't be used the way that Riven players were used to sounds like it would take a bit of adjusting, but at the same time, it would be cool to be able to use it in the middle of a combo with full edge and kill someone on like half HP or something like that. Another thing to consider is that because Windslash would consume all of your edge when you threw it, maybe you could kill the first target with your ult, but if you threw it and lost all your edge, you would have a much harder time killing another enemy in a teamfight since you would lose that 10% bonus damage and you'd have to stack it up again. It honestly sounds like an interesting extension of her kit, and overall, on paper, it seems like the changes were pretty cool. So what happened then when Riven players tried it out on PvE? What were their thoughts? Were they good? Well, not exactly. Within just a few games of trying it out, Riven players found out that they weren't exactly excited for it, and people playing against it also didn't happen to like it. So why not? What was wrong with it? Was she super nerfed? Well, no. Without a doubt, they became obvious that the edge damage was just way too high, and these were straight buffs to the champion. The early laning phase was far better, as you could smack people around and keep your edge stacked up. Good Riven players already didn't have a problem winning trades because of the animation cancels, but now imagine adding more damage on top of that by constantly proccing your passive. The damage that Windslash did on enemies with your edge stacked up was crazy high. In teamfights, you could just melt people, it didn't matter if they were low or not. With Riven being a popular champion, this is one of those instances where people did actively go to the PBE and try it out, which doesn't always happen. The mystery of it all was very interesting. Players at the time had no idea how long it would last, or if it would ever be released, so they jumped over to the PBE to try it out and see what would happen. The tweet from Rick Maher, previously Riot Rickless Abandon, really puts into context what he was thinking with the changes. He says that whenever he mentions something is experimental, he means it. Thinking of the potential reasons why Riot even did this if they knew that they were just going to pull the plug on it was because they wanted to use it as a test for other in-game mechanics. For example, just a few months after these Riven changes, we would see Keystone Masteries with the Season 6 update. The Keystone Fervor of Battle would be introduced to help fighters and ADCs in sustained fights, eventually evolving into Conqueror, which is what we have today. It's possible that some form of code for future runes and champions uses the same baseline as this Riven Edge system. Actually, if you think about it, the way that Gwen stacks work is also quite similar. Gwen stacks up on auto attacks and then uses her Q to expend all of the charges. Now obviously her Q is just a basic ability, and you don't have to weave autos, but again, maybe the edge system was just a way for Riot to test champion kit systems, and they had literally no intention of ever releasing this. One more thing to remember is that the PBE testing has never been quality. For years, the PBE has been a place to attempt to solve massive game-breaking bugs, but unfortunately Riot's track record on fixing them is a little all over the place. The PBE though is rarely used as a way of judging champion balance. Since there's essentially no matchmaking, PBE has a ton of trolls, the least number of players attempting to even win or playing their main, and some players have good ping and others have it in the hundreds. The PBE has extremely low quality games, making it very difficult to judge how strong something is. If a Riven main who is platinum or higher with good ping and wanted to seriously test the rework plays against people who are bronze, have 250 ping, and couldn't give a crap about the PBE, it's no surprise that they would be stomped by this, whether it was a Riven buff or a nerf. So because of this, it's made it so that throughout League history we've really had to rely on Riot's internal testing more than we have community feedback and PBE games for champion balance. And at the end of the day, League doesn't run on a polling system like old school runes or something like that. In the end, we never have a say on whether or not changes will go through. It's still up to Daddy Riot. It's a bit unfortunate because, again, players should like the idea of being rewarded for doing something well, but obviously this just wasn't it, and it was way, way too powerful. This only ended up making it through one PBE cycle, never to be seen again or talked about. It's understandable given that it was experimental, but even though I don't play Riven anymore, a part of me would still like to see something like this someday. Maybe because at the very least it just seemed cool. What if the edge system did something different than just give 10% bonus damage or scale the wind slash damage? Maybe it could have given your ability some bonus range and removed that from the ultimate. Who knows? 
As far as changes since then for Riven, she hasn't really received too much. Back in Season 9, she got a nice visual effects update, which really improved the look of her base model and some of her older skins, and some Riven players swear by the original skins and how they feel to use. As for other experimental type reworks, as far as I know, from my research and just remembering back, to think of a time where Riot said these changes are 100% just for testing, I can't recall another time where that happened. It's possible that this confused a lot of players, or the messaging wasn't clear as to why it happened. I'd assume that this kind of stuff, where they just give champions random adjustments to their kit just to see how it feels, happens a lot behind the scenes at Riot. Messing around with the game and exploring new ideas seems like a lot of fun. Imagine if we had that power. What if we could just see what it would be like to make Yasuo's flow stacks do something different? Rather than giving him a shield, what if it made him speed up or it made him dash further? But hang on, there was another time where Riot used the term experimental to describe a rework, but I think things were different. There was a much higher chance that this would actually get pushed to live. To celebrate Teemo's 10th anniversary, in February of 2019, Riot put out a Teemo rework to the PvE. This was tagged as experimental, but there were a lot of interesting things going on. Teemo has always been a champion that got left in the dust of this evolving game. In fact, if I made this video even just one month ago, before Riot decided to buff Teemo in one of the recent patches, I could have said he's just been completely neglected. For years, he seems like he's been an annoying low elo stomper that feels impossible to lane against, but struggles to see consistent play in high elo and is completely absent from pro. Teemo was one of the original champions, and his age as a champion becomes a topic of conversation every year. He's in desperate need of a rework, and just about three years ago they tried something. First, his E and his passive were essentially switched. Instead of Teemo doing damage over time on autos with his E, that was his new passive, and then the damage was amplified on poison targets. Also, the Q still blinded, but applied the passive damage over time as well, meaning he finally had a DOT at level 1 and a blind. Teemo would no longer gain stealth by standing still or using bushes. Instead, it was his E ability. By pressing E, even in the middle of a fight by the way, it would take a second to load up and then stealth him. It used an interesting way of counting down the time remaining. The more that you moved from your stealth spot, the more the ability expired. What was cool is that you could move in okay distance though. You didn't have to be completely stationary, although the stealth was not infinite like his passive has always been. Also, they changed it so you could reveal him. You could break his stealth just by hitting him. The W was mostly unchanged though and remained a weird lackluster ability. These changes gave him some good burst and he played much more like an assassin, some kind of Twitch or Evelyn playstyle. However, the on-hit builds were nerfed and his split pushing was much weaker. More than ever, he could sneak up on an ADC and pop them, but there was no way that he could sidelane and deal with tanks because the consistent damage lost on his E on hit meant that Teemo players had to adjust to a new playstyle. His shrooms were also buffed, giving him more to work with. The Assassin Teemo build saw some mixed reception from the players. Some absolutely loved it, and others prayed that it would never hit the live servers. Changing Teemo from Riot's perspective is very difficult because he's so iconic and is such a classic champion from the very early days of this game. He's a staple pick that players have an expectation for, even if it's not always in the name of balance. Teemo is definitely hard to balance and his kit is quite literally toxic, but it's kind of fine, you know, because that's just Teemo. He's just Teemo. We accept that he's frustrating to play against because he's always been that way, even during the quote-unquote glory days of this game. Anyway, what do you guys think of these reworks? Would you be interested in Riot actually doing more stuff like this? Or do you think the pushback from the community isn't really worth it, since we'd be essentially their guinea pigs just testing stuff that has almost no chance of being put into the game? Do you personally have any other mechanics or champions that you play that you'd like to see changed? Or even better, do you have some experimental ideas of your own? I'd love to know what crazy ideas you guys would come up with. Seriously, let me know in the comments down below if you've ever thought of any really cool champion ideas. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would check out my Patreon. I try really hard to make these high quality videos and really put a lot of time into them and I hope that that shows. Of course, you don't have to, but I would just appreciate you considering it if you can financially and I will see you guys next time.